10 to 10 at night and look at this, it's still fairly light. Can't get over how light it is out there. Anyway, I'll say good night and I'll see you in the morning. I've just got out of the tent on Wednesday, the 15th of June. It's quarter past five in the morning. The sun's already up. It's not windy. I'll just say it's a sea breeze coming in. It's not a cold wind. It looks like it's going to be a scorcher of the day again. I so love this time of the year when the days are long. Night is short, look at that. That's the way I came in past those beach huts yesterday over that bridge. And that's the way I'll be leaving over this little part of the river that's going into the sea. And then along there, the ferry over to Southwell where all those buildings are silhouetted. There's a lighthouse. I'll try and show you with the demonstration what's failed on the XPED sleeping mat. So this is my XPED inflatable pillow. It's got exactly the same inflation deflation system. There's the inflation valve there and you just blow in that or force air into it and that green valve opens up and the minute you stop blowing or forcing air in it closes and then you just put the popper on and there's the deflation one on the other side you simply open that and all the air escapes there's no valve on that here's the XPED sleep map there's the deflation valve and here's the inflation one you can see that green valve has just disappeared you've still got the arm there with a little hole in there to support it so why that's fallen out I'm really not sure I've I wiggled my finger down inside to see if I can sort of locate it and maybe put it back into place but I can't see it at all. I thought about a fix for this problem and by Friday I'd repaired it. It's gone 6am now and I'm just chilling out in my tent. There's absolutely no point in rushing whatsoever because the ferry doesn't start operating until 10am. So the plan today is there's a pillbox just north of Southwold and then there's a couple just south of Lowestoft I'll pass through Lowestoft there's a point of interest there which I'll share with you then it's up to Great Yarmouth and there's a couple on the outskirts of Great Yarmouth I may well try for a commercial campsite tonight and pay to camp just basically because I need a shower and to get cleaned up a little bit I don't want to get too unhygienic in the next couple of days it's 20 to 8 now, I'm all packed up, ready to go. I'm going to try and find some toilets or at least a water tap somewhere where I can wash some of my clothes and just bungee them to the back of the bike today. I'm sure they're dry in this weather. It's very warm already. There's plenty of people down on the beach already swimming. Wow, it looks nice. There's my site then. Leave no trace as usual rubbish bag I'll just be dumping that the first opportunity back across the bridge through the houses and then along to the ferry I've just ridden up past the village green there's some shops there I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a cup of tea later on uh, before the ferry then along here to the riverside and that's looking over Warburswick Harbour Apparently, I'm told, this is a rowing boat across here, so you get rowed across by manual labour. Chance to show you where I've been so far. So that's where I started, Ipswich. And I rowed along, not on that busy A14, but next to it at places, mostly on minor roads. That's where I saw the poppies, and that's where I got the ferry across the River Debden. And then almost instantly, there. Ballsley Beach that's where the pillboxes were well one was and the remains saw the site of the second one and then inland don't think he's on here but Alderton would be about there and then there's quite a long afternoon stretch and I eventually got to Alderborough that's where I got those views of Sizewell Power Station up the coast a few miles skirted around Minsmere, kept seeing signs for Dunwich and then I went across here I think and into Warburswick there, camped on the beach last night I'm just about to cross this, I think it's the River Blythe 
and then I'll be carrying on just north of Southwood, Southwold rather. It's there's another pillbox I think it's called Raiden and then I head up go into Kesingland there's one there and then back out there there's a couple there and then I head into Lowestoft there's an interesting story to tell you about Lowestoft just use the toilet hand washer with one of those three in one jobs and there's also an outside tap so I could rinse things out so I've actually washed my ground sheet off that had a beer spillage, <laughs> a lot of sand on it from last night. Also washed some clothes as well, got some socks on the back. I've got a bungee cord on my rack, so I've sort of made an ad hoc washing line. But these have been here about 15 minutes and they're almost dry already. They're certainly going to dry on the back of the bike all day. Might as well make use of the time while I'm waiting for the ferry. That was fantastic, you get rode across, made it look quite easy, ever such a friendly guy. That was fantastic experience. So I've got a bungee cord which I've wrapped round, threaded it round the rack a lot, just to create some tension to hold the washing down. Just tied the socks on the straps, they're not going anywhere. That should be dry by mid-afternoon. Clean clothes for tomorrow. Now in lovely sunny South World. Stopped at Tesco Express, bought myself some supplies. Just going to sit and chill out here for a bit. There's the pier. To give you an idea how easy these are to miss, I knew this bridge was the, the point of reference again, so I knew it was here somewhere. You can only just see it there covered in undergrowth. Very aware of the circular structure of it from this perspective. This viewpoint you can clearly see its circular structure. Looks like people have fires in here, lined up the blocks to sit on. So how long this poppy stays here I'm not sure but I think I'll put it there actually. This one is called Raiden Pillbox. I would say it's more Southwold because you're literally just outside the boundary sign of Southwold. And I'm going to go along this road, literally just around the corner. And I'll turn off right and that'll take me through the small town of Raiden. I'm not sure what my mileage is going to be today because I've clearly lost a lot of time waiting for that ferry. And I really didn't want to rush looking around Southwold as well. So. How far I'm going to get tonight I don't know but I think my priority is to look for a commercial campsite and then just really try to clean up and get hygienic again. I'm heading towards Kesingland now so I carry on parallel to the coast northwards then turn like 90 degrees right towards the coast there's I think it's a hexagonal one the next one and then I literally go down there do a dog leg come back cross over that road that was going north and then start snaking in from the left doing a curl into the outskirts of Lowestoft and then there's a couple at Rushmere. I just joined the A12 Ipswich to Lowestoft Road only did about a mile on it and I'm just about to go across that roundabout in fact there's a cycle pass down here Heading down to Kessingland, where there's my next World War I pillbox. Then I'll retrace back across this main road, well, underneath it by the look of it. And then it's there's going to be two at Rushmere. And look, there's some strawberries there. Just had to be done, didn't it? I just bought myself some strawberries. While I stop, I'll just tell you a little bit about the research I'm using. Fresh local strawberries on a cycle tour doesn't get much better than that, does it? I'm just going to golf these down and then head down towards Kessingland. So this is the sheet I've been using to locate them. Um, 
I've got all these sort of references that I can tap into the Suffolk Heritage Explorer. I think it's like the archaeology department of Suffolk County Council, and there's also the equivalent for Norfolk. So I sort of referred to it yesterday. The route is almost in two halves. This is like what I call part one, the southern tranche of boxes. Um, as I as I <laughs> refer to it, it's North Suffolk and South Norfolk. Um, so East Lane was that first one opposite the big rectangular World War II structure. That was the one that's been washed in the sea. Alderton, there were two there, either side of that farm track. Then I went down to Shingle Street. Reagan this morning, that was more like Southwold really. I'm going to head down across that roundabout to Kessingland and then backtrack up to Rushmere where there's two. And then after I've passed through Great Yarmouth, there's a couple of places of interest there, blue plaques, I want to share that with you. There's two hexagonal boxes either side of the A47 road and then that'll be it for this stretch. And that Kessingland, and again, this one's quite hard to find. My OS map mark had indicated that it was right by the church um, near Manor Farm. And I asked a lady going into Manor Farm care who worked there, and she said she'd never heard of it. She'd have to look it up. So I straight away knew it's going to be tricky. I just, the obvious track was to go into Manor Farm. There was a guy there. I just sort of said, is it all right if I come and have a look at a pillbox? I, I believe it's on your land. And he said, yes, it is. Um, he sort of said it's private property, but he was okay about me coming along. He sort of said people walk along here all the time. So that's Manor Farm over there. I went in and he said, turn left on the track, which took me along here, and then turn right. And here it is here. Pretty overgrown, but the frontage is obviously in quite good condition. I'll have a quick look inside. If I shine the torch inside, you'll see it's in fairly good condition. Access by the door at the back is, is clear, but you would have to get in there from the other side. Bit of graffiti on the wall. But otherwise, in fairly good condition. The last one on the outskirts of Southwold. Because uh, it is in a sort of urban area, you could tell that like, you've been along there. Like you, you just spotted all the signs where they've been along there. Um, obviously not the case here this is much more rural I'm just going to leave a poppy just inside here actually and then I'll be on my way now I backtrack back to that round out underneath the subway past the lady you saw with the strawberries and then up to two more about a mile away I'm now on my third and fourth pillboxes of the day and I have to say these two are by far the easiest to locate I'm on this lovely quiet country lane near Rushmere just crossing this river here you can easily see them in the fields there's one and there's the other The payback for finding them so easy is no admittance so and clearly even if you could get through there there's no access so I'm going to have to leave my poppies here I think. There was one this morning just north of Southwold, in fact it's by the boundary sign crossing the river and again I very nearly missed it, I, I knew it was there, I knew what I was looking for but it was very difficult to find and then the last one, Kesslingland, back that way a couple of miles. Again, I was stuck, I asked a couple of people, nobody knew. I went down this farm and asked this guy, and he said, yeah, it's on my land. And I said, all right, to go and take a picture. And he said, yeah, sure, it's his private property, but you're okay. Easy to find, directed me to it. That was the first of the hexagonals. That's the second and the third. So I'm getting through my list. This is my, this is all the references. So there's gonna be two more today, just north of Yarmouth. And then there's uh, a long stretch with nothing along the coast before the second tranche of them, much further north near Cromer of Wales next to the sea.
just carry on along that road a little bit and I've just turned up this farm track you get a closer view from here but again the gates are padlocked I'm not going to trespass clearly private farmland gives you an idea the steel door at the back all the firing apertures quite a lot of turf on the roof these two are in really good condition that one looks like it's subsided a little bit once again it's so bright I'm struggling to see what's on the screen I think I've got them both in the one shot there Ten to two, as you can see, it's another baker today. I'm in the village of Carton Colville. I was starting to think about lunch actually just before I hit lower stuff, and lo and behold, it just seemed an appropriate place to have my sandwich. Bon appetit! Now I reach the coast at Lower Stoft and this little suburb there's a notice board here telling you about all the lost homes. So coastal erosion along here as most people know it's a huge issue and then you can sort of see here it's been a big issue there must have been streets along here which have just basically had to be abandoned and given away to the sea. I guess places like this where there's like economic value they will spend a lot of money protecting it homes but there's other places I remember Tom outdoors visited this caravan park and it's just deserted it, it looks like it's fairly recent as well it looks like fairly modern caravan it's just completely deserted like a ghost town and it's just because it's been abandoned due to impending erosion same as that second pillbox yesterday they're not going to protect a coastline like that to the extent they are going to do around here Anyway, into Lower Stoft, and then there's a story related to the First World War. Now in very sunny and baking hot and cold in the sand of Lower Stoft, looking over at the harbour there, there's a story attached to the First World War. I won't go into too much detail, as usual I'll put a link in the description below. There's a much more um, detailed video about the story, but basically in April 1916, I'll put the date on the screen now, but it was Easter, there was a German naval shelling of Lower Stoft. It coincided with the Easter Rebellion uprising in Dublin, so all British either folks on the, the, the west, and there was this German attack from the east. And one of the shells came over from, I think it was a 15 inch gun, didn't explode, and went through the end wall of the terrace of houses and carried on through 13 more houses before it embedded in the wall of the 14th house, still unexploded. That just gives you the, an idea of the power of those sort of shells. Somebody's worked out the flight path of that shell and they've embedded it on a photograph of the damaged terrace. I'll put that on the screen now. Now quarter past five and on Great Yarmouth seafront by the Ferris wheel there, right opposite Sea Life and this is the Carton Hotel. And before this section became part of the hotel, this was the quarters of a Lieutenant Egbert Cadbury. He was heir to the Cadbury chocolate business and he served as a Royal Naval flyer and he was stationed at Great Yarmouth. He shot down two Zeppelins during the war and he was decorated twice and later on he went on to become managing director of Cadbury's. In fact it was under his stewardship that the Somervale factory and all the facilities were open quite close to me. He was also a magistrate, a philanthropist and he was knighted near the end of his life and died in Western Supermare in 1967 I believe. And what fascinated me was him being part of a, a very famous Quaker family, you know there's a bit of an ethical dilemma there isn't there. 
you sort of think about it, most of us have seen that footage of the Hindenburg bursting into flames as it came into land, people jumping off, you know, to try and save their lives. Well, he ignited two of them at 17,000 feet. They wouldn't have stood a chance, you know. So that puzzled me, really. A bit of a paradox. So I read up a little bit about him, and I think there's a few clues in this article. That I'll, I'll put the article in the description below. It's about a five or six minute read. It's quite... It's more biographical, but it does give a few quotes and it, I think, for me, it answers those questions. By complete coincidence, just around the corner was the first ever air raid on British soil. It was in January of 1915 and there's a blue plaque on that wall, so I'm going to sort of wander around the back streets to try and find it. the site of Britain's first ever air raid. There actually is a photograph of the damage done so I'll put that on the screen now. And also Ian Castle runs a really good website. Any information on First World Air Raids, that's the place to go. There's a dedicated page to this raid actually, so I'll put a link to that below as well. Just tells you the story of what actually happened. As I understand it, there's three airships. One of them turned round soon after taking off because of engine trouble. And the other two hit bad weather, fog I think it was, and they were heading for the Humber, but they made it here instead. Just gone 6 p.m. I'm on the busy, I think it's the A47 out of Great Yarmouth. Really straight road, runs right alongside the railway, that was good timing. There's a big lake over there as well. And there's two hexagonals, one either side of this road, the other's over there. And I've just sort of hit rush hour, so it's not the ideal time to come and visit. I'm just gonna wander down. There's uh, a, a signpost there, I'll leave the poppy on that. And on that side, I'll probably uh, probably put it on that the wooden pole, I think. Oh, look, there's a windmill over there as well. Yeah, I'll probably put it on that wooden footpath pole. Once again, there's poppies at the location. Not massive amounts, but it's amazing how often there does seem to be poppies. So here's the first one on the left-hand side, heading westwards. Looks in really good condition. Again, it's got a bit of turf on the roof, but apart from that, steel doors are locked by the bit. There's a little ring along the bottom, ditch. And there's actually uh, a cluster of poppies on that pole where I'm going to uh, tie my poppy. There you go, wild natural poppies and a woolen poppy. Uh, apologies for the traffic noise. There you go, tied to the post just with it in the distance. I'm now cooking my evening meal at my campsite. So when I left the two bill pillboxes, it's very busy mile or so back into Great Yarmouth. Then luckily on the outskirts, there was a cycle path on my carriageway. Then I crossed the river, started heading out of town, and I just thought I'd go up the coast a few miles. The minute I see a sign saying somewhere on the sea or the beach, I just head inland and look for somewhere to camp. I was hoping to find a camp, so I passed a big holiday park and I vaguely considered going in there, but it just looked at not really my sort of thing. I was just coming up here towards the beach to probably do another world camp. I just saw race course, caravan park, so I just came in, asked if I could camp. I disturbed them while they were having their evening meal. 
Um, anyway, so I've just had a shower, feel really nice and clean, swept all the sand out of everything. It's just really nice to sort of feel human again, had a shave and everything. So I'm just cooking pasta, same as last night, going to drain it and then pour a tin of chicken curry in. Got no beer tonight. I didn't really fancy any, but I really need to drink lots of water. I've been drinking all day, but obviously not enough. It's now 5.20 a.m. in my tent. It's already light and the sun's up. I've got things outside drying. feel really nice and clean after that shower and had a really good wash of everything last night and got myself organised. Today I start on the second sheet of my pillbox trail. What I've done up to now, I had all the ordnance survey maps. I, I, I located all the pillboxes over the winter and then circled them and then... Put a, a green highlight around that circle and then got all the references up there pointing down each one i couldn't bring all the maps just been too bulky what i did do on the first section between ipswich and great yarmouth last night i took photographs like of, of these maps today there's just so many I've actually bought the Ordnance Survey map out. So the first one I'm going to visit today is at Sea Palling, just slightly off this map. I should find that <laughs> touch wood fairly easily. I hope anyway, because I've actually finished the GPS route there. So one GPS route will end and the next one will start. And this, this is why I bought the map. There's just so many today and lots of them are in pairs as well. I'd have struggled to find them. It's been lovely weather. I'm not complaining whatsoever. It's fantastic. But one of the problems it has thrown up is my screen has just been bleached with the sun. It's just dazzled. And it's been, I've struggled to actually read the information on it. I've had to dive under the trees to try and get a bit of shade. So anyway, today, hopefully visiting quite a few of these. And then there's a final sheet for tomorrow.